This week, we're going to be starting a three-part uh, built-in cabinet series. Uh, we have this corner in our dining room that is really just wasted space, and we are in desperate need of some storage. Uh, so stay tuned if you want to build something similar, but let's get into part one. All right, so what I like to do before I ever start building anything or before I ever step foot into the shop is I get myself a, a graphing notebook um, and I like to just jot out, you know, to scale what it is we're building. Um, I've always found, you know, as a DIYer, right, we're not doing this every day. We don't have, uh, you know, as much expertise as somebody who's doing this professionally. Um, this just gives me something to look forward to, not only in my head what we're building, but also on paper, a visual reference. So let's bring in here and just show you um, kind of the notes that, that I always have prior to starting a project. So going over to our graph notebook, this is what we're looking to build. Again, going for that board and batten look um, with minimal gaps in between our doors as possible to give it the image of that board and batten accent wall rather than a bunch of cabinets sitting up against the wall. So this is again what we want the outside to look like. And then moving over to our inside, um, these are both going to be open, some, some shelves in the tops of each of these, as well as some drawers here in the middle. And we just have a preliminary cut list here to break down our big sheets of plywood to ensure we don't waste any because it's $100 a sheet. So let's start the video. Now we certainly could have used the table saw to cut these sheets to size. I found it's much easier to use a circular saw and a straight edge. To do so, we simply lay some foam board down on the work surface, clamp a straight edge to our sheet of plywood, and run our saw along our straight edge. Once we have these sheets broken down, we can bring them back to the table saw to finish cutting them down to their final dimensions. All right, so now that we got all of our pieces cut to length, what we're gonna do now is bring them to the table saw and we're gonna rip them to width. So looking at our, our cut list here, it uh, looks like everything's gonna be 22 and a half inches wide. All right, so as you guys can see here, we got all of our sides cut for our cabinet boxes. Uh, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take our last two sheets over here uh, and we're gonna cut our tops and our bottoms. Again, they're gonna be the same width as our sides. Um, the length, we're making 36 inch wide cabinet boxes. So these are gonna be ripped to 36 pieces, or 36 inches rather. Um, and we are going to need six of them as well. So here we go. All right, as you guys can see here, we got all of our side pieces for our cabinet boxes cut to size, as well as our top and bottoms. Uh, so the next step here is on all of our side pieces, on both the top and the bottom, we're gonna be cutting a little bit of a, a rabbit. So we're gonna go three quarter inches deep and a half inch wide. That way our top and bottom pieces of our cabinet boxes are gonna sit in those grooves. And that's gonna give us really strong cabinet boxes that we know aren't gonna sag over time or anything like that. Um, we could come over here and do it on our table saw with a dado stack. Uh, however, I don't have a dado stack 
And I've, I've found with these really long, awkward pieces, they're pretty difficult to cut on the table saw um, and still get really accurate cuts. And obviously, the more accurate we get those, the easier it's gonna be to square these cabinet boxes up. Um, so I'm just gonna use it with a circular saw and a level um, and just cut a bunch of grooves and we'll obviously chisel out and make the bottom smooth. Again, all we're doing here is taking all of our side pieces and cutting a rabbit in the top and bottom of all of those pieces. This essentially creates a shelf that our panels are gonna sit into rather than just relying on screws to hold these cabinet boxes together. In my opinion, this is just a little bit stronger and is my preferred way of building cabinet boxes. Next, we'll use some setup blocks to move our fence three quarter inch away from our blade, as well as set our blade height to a quarter inch tall. This will allow us to cut our groove in all of our pieces to accept our back panel. After we send all the pieces through, we can then move the fence over, allowing us to accomplish that quarter inch groove. You can see I am taking many passes, adjusting the fence a little bit each time and using a scrap piece of quarter inch plywood to ensure we get a tight fit. Once we have all the pieces cut to size, I go ahead and sand them all now. Believe me, it's much easier to do it at this point rather than waiting until all of the boxes are glued up trying to sand in all the nooks and crannies. Given the weight and size of these cabinets, it's always a good idea to dry fit everything prior to adding glue. You can see we had no issues during dry fit and were able to achieve nice square corners. All right, we went ahead and did a little bit of work off camera. All we did was we placed our side pieces or our top and bottom pieces um, into our grooves here. And as you can see, we glued those up um, and we put in our, our back plate here. So we cut this to size and that fits in our groove all the way around the piece. Um, we went ahead and let the sides set up overnight, just given the weight of that top piece. We wanna make sure that was nice and firm before we put all that weight on top. This morning I came out here and just laid that top piece on, made sure the plywood went into that groove that we cut and glued it up and put some clamps on it. While we wait for the glue to dry, I go ahead and cut all of our support pieces and drill pocket holes into each end. These are going to help both stiffen the box as well as give us nailers when we go to attach the cabinets to the walls during installation. All right, the very last thing just to secure these cabinet boxes together is we're gonna take some trim head screws. So as you can see here, just a very small head. And we're gonna send a couple of these through our top into our back support. And again, what that's gonna do here is it's really gonna suck these together and make this corner crazy strong just to make sure these cabinets obviously don't warp or anything over time. So we let the box fully cure. Um, got some assistance moving it over here. So as you can see, it makes a little bit more sense now what I was talking about where we cut that groove and we let the top board or the top panel sit inside the side. So it just gives it a little bit more strength um, and make sure it doesn't sag over time. So next what we're gonna do is do the exact same process two more times to get our three boxes. So I'm not gonna bore you guys and show you 
um, the same process over and over, but just know we're gonna do that same thing and build two more of those. Time for a quick update. So as I said, we made that one box, we just had to make two more. So as you guys can see here, we have three total boxes, again, all identical. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build our toe kick over here in this just open area. And we're gonna set all these on top, level them out, get everything perfect. That way we can start to fit and cut our face frame. Once we have our toe kick complete, I move it onto the ground and begin to level it out with shims. It's important we get this dead level before adding our cabinets. We're going to be building our face frame based off of this mock-up, and if it's not level here, the face frame will not fit once we go to install the cabinets inside. Once that is complete, we can bring in our cabinet boxes and place them on top of our toe kick, verifying everything remains level. With all of our cabinet boxes in place and level, it's now time to construct our face frame. We're going for a full overlay here with minimal gaps in between the doors. To accomplish this look, we're going to be using an inch and five eighths wide face frame for all the cabinets. To make our face frame, we will start by measuring the height of our cabinets and cutting those two outside pieces. Once those are cut, I then clamp them onto the cabinet boxes and measure the distance in between the two for our top and bottom rail. It's important you measure the top and cut both the top and bottom pieces the same length in order to ensure your face frame is square. If it's not square, you will not be able to get your doors to hang correctly. As you probably guessed it, once we have our outside box built and squared up, we simply measure the two inside pieces and cut them to length. Once we have our face frame mocked up, we disassemble it and drill pocket holes in all of the ends to join it together. Now that the face frame is complete, we bring it back over to our cabinet boxes and clamp it back into place, ensuring everything lines up just as it did before. The final piece needed to complete these cabinet boxes is the shelf and face frame for the drawers on the middle box. To create the shelf, we simply screw some scrap pieces of plywood into each corner that our shelf will rest on. For the front pieces, we, we ensure we set them back three quarters of an inch to allow room for the face frame for our drawers. With all of our support secured, we can now slide our three quarter inch birch shelf into place, measuring to ensure our shelf is level. Following the exact same process from earlier in the video, we create another face frame for the drawers. Once complete, I give it a quick sanding and then glued and nailed it into place. And with that, our cabinet boxes are complete. That is going to do it for part one of this cabinet build series. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment below any future builds you guys would like to see us make on the channel. Uh, and be sure to stick around for part two and three of this series and see how these cabinets turn out. I will catch you guys on the next video.